God told me just this morning, I don't want to entertain my people. I want to maintain. Listen, I want to maintain the people the way Jesus did by teaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. That's how you maintain. Right. Other than that, you'll start looking for entertainment. You know, that's what a lot of people is looking for, entertainment. This ain't no time for entertainment. We're in war. Whether anybody know it or not, I don't care what the media is saying. I don't care what they're saying. We're in war. And if we don't be ready for that war, we will be destroyed. And that's what I'm trying to do. You know, like I said, I'm not angry. I'm angry at the devil. It's time for us to wake up. You know, some of us been in this world 30, 35, we've been in a long time. I can't help folks that ain't helping themselves. Come on now. If you want me to push your car, you have to put it in neutral. Get it out of park. I can't push you in park. You got to put it in neutral and you give me a lead right here. Give me a little leverage. Right. You know, and it's not good when all hell breaks loose. Then we want to just cry out to God. We need to be crying out all along and obeying so that we can get the goodness of God. And we won't have to worry about it because he'll have us covered. I don't care what we go through. We will be covered. Goshen was covered. They didn't have to stop and start doing nothing. You know what happened? They got quiet so they could hear instructions. They weren't just crying, oh, Lord, help us. Oh, we're in trouble. Oh, no, they got quiet so they, they could hear instructions so that they would know the next move to make. But we so busy crying out, we can't hear instructions because we too know to begging when we shouldn't be begging. Right, and should just drown him out because we begging for him to do something. He done did it already. He's just ready to give us instructions on how to go about doing it. So it's time out for entertainment. It's time to start maintaining. He done set up a kingdom that he think belonged to him. And when we allow him to work it through us, we're in agreement with him and have fallen out of agreement with God. Right? That's exactly what happens. Because everything that we are going through, Jesus went through it. Think about it. And then he told us it was finished. So why are we trying to resurrect it? It's finished. Right? Pain in my back is finished. Pain in my neck is finished. Pain, why, why? I keep trying to resurrect it. Right. Why do I always need prayer for it? No, it's finished. I need to tell the devil where to go. Get off of me. He says, speak to the mountain. Ain't nothing finished when you always got to have prayer. <laughs> it ain't finished. And the devil needs to know that it's finished. Because if I keep getting prayer for what Jesus did. It's just tearing me on down and after a while I'll be out of here. That, that's his trick. That's how he do it. That's why people are losing their minds and everything. They focus right on what they're going through. Are you all still with me? The focus is on what they're going through. If you don't do nothing, just open your Bible and read your Bible. That would take your mind off of what you're going through at that time. Because if you ain't got the word going in, word is coming out. And what they said and what they did and how I feel, and how they did. You know, the Lord told me today, he says, you know what? People be saying, oh, wow, I did all of that for that person. I did this and I did that. And look what they did to me. He said, look what I did for them, and they killed me. So they ain't killed you yet. They ain't killed you yet, Eddie. <laughs> Come on now, let's get there. Right. Had they killed you yet? No, they killed me. Right. <laughs> You know, not saved them. They said, crucify him, crucify him. And I had just laid hands on some of them, and they had got healed and got set free. And they said, well, crucify him. So it don't matter what somebody done did to you. He took care of that already. Why are you still pacifying and holding on? Uh, uh, but what they said, what they did, you know, and I, I done did, gave them my whole life, and I done, you know, did all this for them. And look what they think. I didn't treat them like that. Well, Jesus didn't treat them like that either. But they killed him. <laughs> and all this foolishness is going to kill folks that's hanging around. 
patting themselves and getting stared out in what you looking at? I'm telling you, is you my God, you need to be looking at the word like that and you'll be all right. It's just really, really, it's not good at all. Because everything that God has done for us, he done taken, he's taken care of all of that, that we allow the devil to keep bringing up against us. And we're nursing it. Do it ever get any better, though? Think about it. You're nursing it, and it ain't getting no better, so and that ought to tell you something right there. It's time for a change. Yeah, it's just time to change this thing. Because can't nobody change it but you. God don't come against your will. He crying that you will change it, but he can't come against you and make you change it. How far is this going to go before the devil really destroy him? Because they got a reason for every time you mention something to them, they got a reason why they did it, and a reason why it's happening. The reason is you. You're not taking care of what God have taught us. He came here. He didn't come here to build a religion. He came here to build a kingdom. That's what he came to build, and build it in us. And when we don't allow him to build it in us, Satan will tear it down. He will tear us right down. You know, what, what do it matter? You know, you just got to get to the point in your life and say, now, how much do this matter? Because I got to go into eternity. And I'm supposed to have a certain way that I need to go into eternity because it is a judgment seat I'm going to have to sit on. I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be judged for what I know and judged for what I didn't try to know. I'm going to be judged. I'm not going to allow nobody to have me to get a false judgment. They are not that important. Are y'all listening to me? They're not to see because we all got to stand before the judgment seat for ourselves. I can't say what well, they made me do. This is why. This is why I didn't make it because they did. You know. This is why I didn't because, you know what I'm saying. This is why. You know, right. We went through that too with my mom when we was growing up. We learned that. My aunt had took us to a carnival. Y'all probably heard it before, and she was getting ready to leave. She had taken Charlie, Chris, me, and Ma for all of us. We was there at that carnival, and she was getting ready to leave. Well, we wasn't ready to leave yet because we was having fun. So we stayed, and when we got home, my mother started asking each individual, why did we stay? See, she let everybody say, they re- and that's how God gonna all give us a chance to say why we didn't do what we were supposed to do. Can't put it on. And even I'll just go to cut it short, even to the last one, which was young. I don't know, how, how old was Ma then? About maybe seven or eight or something like that? She wouldn't, praise God. You're right, her. she wasn't that old. She was about five. And my mother said, well, why didn't you come? She said, my dear, I couldn't tell time. She said, some folks had watches on out there. You should have asked them. Okay, thank you. And that's how we're going to be. We're going to be held responsible. It might seem hard, but God chastens those he loves. See, she'll learn from that. She learned from that, that you ask questions. You communicate, right? When you don't know a thing, you ask. That's how you learn. And we tried to put it on Charlie. We paid, we stayed because Charlie stayed. <laughs> she said, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because we, we always have an excuse. This is the point that I'm trying to make. I'm still teaching. The Holy Spirit is teaching through me, first natural and then spiritual. So I'm going to get to the word, but this is the word. This is the foundation. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Chris used to say, I stayed because C stayed. I know you told us to get home early, but I stayed there with C. She said, oh, yeah. She said, uh-huh. You know, you assess her to the fact, you know, when you're somebody, you know, even in the natural. You say, well, I didn't know that they was going to do that. I didn't know that they were, you know what I'm saying? But you were there. They winded up in your company. <laughs> right. So the same beating I got, she got, because she was in my company. But see, she learned, she stopped. She said, I ain't finna go with you, say, you know. <laughs> well, we're going to cut this off right now, see, because I know, see, I know your track record. See, I ain't ready to be going through all that. She said, I see you. I'm out of here. You know, it's time to go. Right. Uh-uh. I used to tell them when they would tell us, they said, well, it's 8 o'clock. They said, yeah, well, you got to be home at 9. I said, we don't get a chance to dance. He said, dance an hour and come on home. 
Ah, and then Chris would be getting her coat. I see you. I'd be on the dancing floor. Still dancing. <laughs> That's right, but I paid for it when I got home. Chris was in the bed already. <laughs> Covered up. Right. And my mother let me get out of my clothes and everything. And went in there and pulled that coat off me and got busy. Uh, I used to think she didn't play fair, but she was training. You learn something when you're trained something. You know, if you got good sense, you don't want to do that no more. You don't want that. Right. So when I came into the things of God, I was already trained. You know, you don't straddle the fence. You do what your authority tells you to do if you don't want the penalty that you're going to have to pay. And we do have to pay a penalty. God loves us. And he loves us enough to correct us. Because if he didn't correct us, we'd still be thinking what we're doing was all right. You got to let folks know what they're doing. That's when you love somebody, when you let them know what they're doing ain't all right. You know, it's consequences. It's a penalty that you pay. And it's the same way in this world. When you don't do right, it's a penalty that we pay. He promises that. You know, he promises long life, and then he also said that you'll have a short life if you don't follow that way that he told us to go through that long life. So I learned real early. And when I, uh, and another thing my mother used to tell us also, she said, you know, in this life, you get whipped with many stripes. She said, you get whipped with few stripes. So it's going to be some whipping going on regardless. The more you know, the more stripes you're going to get. And the less you know, you're still going to get some. You can't get away. You still, I mean, that's how we were trained. For army. <laughs> training. That's right. So you ain't going to be without excuse. But see, we get, you know, we get to the point we want something deep. You know, and the child, we, you know, I want the deep message. You know, the Hebrew, the Greek, I want the deep. No, you better get the shallow. That'll carry you to the deep. And when you get in the deep, you'll know how to swim. Amen. Get in the deep and don't know how to swim, you'll drown. Okay. Right, and the word will drown you if you don't know how to use it. Because Satan will tell you how. I got quite a bit to do today, saints, okay, y'all? Stick with me. And one of them is John 10.10. 10. Let's go to John 10.10. 10. And if I step on your feet, your toes, God will heal them. Right, he will heal them. He's in the healing business. Thank you, Lord. And when you get John 10, 10, I want you to hold that for a moment, and I want you to go over to Psalms 28, okay? Thank you, Father. Yeah. We're going to leave out of here battle ready tonight, today. Yeah, we're going to be ready for, ready for whatever battle that comes up. Father, I thank you today. For all of us came in here today with different expectations. We're expecting to hear from you today, Lord God. And not only expecting to hear, but expecting to move out on what we hear. We will no longer be hearers of your word, but we're going to begin, begin to become doers of your word. We thank you for your word, Father, because you don't watch over nothing but your word. You do not perform nothing but your word. You don't watch over our words if it's not coming from your word. So, Father, today we yield our will to you. No more our wills be done, but your will be done. We want the best that you have for us, Lord God. And we recognize in the covenant it's exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ever think or imagine that would happen for us in this life. Not when we get to heaven, but right now you want these things to happen to us father let us not be concerned about nobody else but us we don't know what you're doing in other people's hearts because you said no man know a heart but father we yield our hearts to you today be concerned about our hearts we thank you father because our expectations are great but you are greater and we come and cast all of our cares on you today lord god that you would carry these cares. You promised us that. But you said we have not because we ask. And you said that if we would draw nigh unto you, 
you will draw nigh unto us. Father, let us not just draw nigh to you when we get a problem or when we're going through changes or challenges. Let us draw nigh to you daily because your mercies are new every morning. So we cry out that we would draw nigh unto you, that you would bring us in a place where we need to be. And I thank you for the anointing today, Father, that all of us that's sitting in here, we are anointed, Lord God. And we recognize it's the anointing that destroys yokes and bondages and hindrances. Nothing else but the anointing. Not anything that we can do, say, or be unless we're saying the word. And I thank you, Father, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me today. Because you've anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To set at those that are bound up free. Sent me to heal the brokenhearted, Lord God. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed, bruised, yoked up with the wrong yoke. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And Father, I yield to that today. That you would move on me to do exactly what your word said that you have placed in me. And I give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. So I, did you all get Psalms? I want to go there. You know, I'm going to go back to John, but I want you all to get Psalms 28. Let's look at verse 7. Let's start there, 28 and 7. When you get there, say amen. amen. The Lord is my strength and my shield. You see that? The Lord is my strength. So ain't nobody else your strength. Stop trying to please everybody. The Lord is your strength. Are y'all still with me so far? Amen or out or shut up or something? Right. The Lord is our strength. Can't nobody else give us the strength that we need. I don't care how we think. They can. They can't. Because it's a void that we were created with. And only Jesus can fill that void. I don't care how attached we get to everything else thinking that that's filling it. It don't. It just it just distracts us. That's what it do. It distracts us from allowing that void to be filled. And so once we get distracted, we don't even know how the feeling is supposed to come about. And we don't even know if we are filled because it becomes a distraction. The Lord is my strength and my shield. Not only my strength, but he's also my shield. Right. You know, a shield, the type of shield that they had, it wasn't these little shields that we see. It's a shield that goes all, it covers your whole body. A shield. That's how the Roman soldier's shield was. That's how Paul broke it down over in Ephesians about that shield. It covers everything, but it don't cover your back. And the church been running ever since. And we've gotten all kind of knives and things in our back that's destroying us. Because we done turned our back running when we should be running into. Because what did David ran into Goliath? He didn't run from him. He ran into Goliath. And he ran into him until he destroyed him. And that's why we're not destroying anything because we were running from it instead of running to it. Run to these problems that the devil is throwing up before you. Run to all of this foolishness that you know shouldn't be on you or shouldn't be in your head thinking. Run to it. When I say run to it, take it down with the word. Get the word and take it down. That's what David did. He got the word and he took it down. He told him what he was going to do. We need to start telling this devil what we're going to do. Call those things though they be not as though they are. Turn that around. But we running from it. And we can't keep running, saints, because we're going to be destroyed if we keep running. Let's look at eight. Now let me finish seven. My heart trusts in him, and I'm helped. You see what he said, my heart. 
It didn't say my mind. It said my heart trusts in him. We're not helped when we allow on our head. You see what you said? My heart trusts. So what is that saying? That's my spirit, right? So can't nobody else help me in the natural. Because they be helping me in my soul. My mind. Come on now. What did it say again? My heart trusted him. Not my head. Because my head trusts natural things. And let your head trust natural things that don't get you nowhere. But he said, my heart trusts. In other words, he's saying the real part of me is trusting, which is my spirit and his spirit. That's what I'm trusting. In this situation I find myself in, I'm trusting from my spirit, not from my head, which is temporal. It's on and it's off. It's my emotions. I don't trust like that anymore. That's what's happening. When you stop trusting in your head, which is your emotions, your mind and your thought life. When you stop trusting like that, you're on your way. Because what comes from the spirit, which is God, is a spirit. It hits your spirit, which you are a spirit. You just live in this body. You have a soul. But that's not what's supposed to be in control of you. That's why when we got saved, the spirit came alive. And he told us, now that you're saved, you got to do something else. you got to renew your mind. Because if you don't get your mind renewed, you're going to still be doing the same way, doing the same things, thinking the same way, reacting the same way, and you will be destroyed. Number eight. Oh, I need seven. I need to finish. And I am helped. That's right. When, you, when you're in your spirit, you're helped. In other words, he's saying, I can't help you in your head, in your soul, in your emotions. I can't help you when you get in your emotions. Other people might be able to help you in your emotions, but it's only temporal. They'll get tired of you after a while. They get tired of those attention-getting spirits. Come on now, because that's what your flesh do. It likes a lot of attention. Are y'all still with me so far? Amen. Amen. Mm, don't, don't quiet up on me. And when it's not getting that attention, it begins to get depressed, oppressed, rejected. You're right. Because can't nobody please your flesh. Now, if I'm pleasing your spirit, I'm all right. You got to get your flesh in order. And that's what God is telling us. When I'm pleasing your spirit, all is well. And I'll give you instructions on how to get that flesh in order. Because it's only the word is going to get it in order. Not your flesh. Your flesh is killing it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. And with my song, I will praise him. You see that? That's the only thing that's going to get you out of. That's what we was talking about today, right? And when that praise came on board, we came alive. Only your praise. Stop focusing on how you feel or what they said, or what they didn't do, or what they did do. You got to come out of that. Start praising God when that thing start happening. He inhabits the praise. He come in and inhabit. He gets in there with you when you start praising. He stopped the pain. He stopped the rejection. He stopped the thought. He stopped all of that. When you start praising, that's what he do. That's why he gets in there with you when you start praising him. But when you're murmuring and complaining, you remain. Keep complaining and remain. And after a while, the destruction, the destroyer will destroy you. Y'all still with me so far? Oh, okay. Because when they called me and said, you just don't know what I'm going through. I said, I sure don't, right? Because you said it right out of your mouth. You're right. Because what you're going through, you're in your flesh, and I'm not in I don't understand that. No, I don't understand that. And people get upset with you. Well, you just don't know. I really don't. You're right. You need to say, come go with me. We're going somewhere, and I need your help. That's right. Come go with me. That's right. But to tell me that you don't, mm -mm, you're right, I sure don't understand that. And I'm not going to let you pull me back to my flesh, because I don't even understand my own flesh. And I don't know why you still understand it, because I don't understand it. Thank you, my Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. So, with my song, I would praise him. I've been in pain so bad, but when I got through praising God, I woke up in a maze. I couldn't hardly see nothing. But when I got through praising God, when I got through praising God, 
Stop complaining and start praising. That's why the devil hangs around when you start complaining. Because that gives him strength. It gives him a lot of strength to take you down. Number eight, the Lord is their strength. Come on now. See, he's even telling you, you know it, they know it. Come on. You know what the devil, he's telling the devil, the Lord is their strength. Come on, he's talking to the devil. The Lord is their strength. They done said it and now I'm in agreement with it. <laughs> Y'all with me? The Lord is their strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he is the saving refuge of his anointed. See there? He's going to save you because he got you anointed. And anointed destroys what? Whatever you're struggling with, that anointing going to destroy Nine, save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. People don't understand what that means. Shepherd your people. A lot of folks don't want to be shepherd. I am a shepherd. Right, and a lot of people don't want to be shepherd because the shepherd tells the truth. He see you, you're going astray, and he want to get you back on in order so that you, you know. That's why he got that rod. He pulls it down, and he pulls you back. They're not a shepherd when they don't, when they see you going in the wrong direction. Well, I don't, I don't want them to, I don't want to say it because I don't know how they feel. I don't care how they feel. I don't. What I care about, they don't know how they feel. That's right, and I need to share with them how they feel. Are y'all still with me? Because, see, just because we feel, think that we're feeling all right, you and your emotions, because in your spirit you don't feel. That's right, and most people are in their emotions. They, they're not looking at it right. You need to get in the spirit and you look at it the way that God looked at it and you'll be okay. And so a lot of times that's what's been going on. We've been in our emotions and we don't know right how we feel. That's why right. praise God. And we got to start knowing, coming out of our emotions, we'd be all right. We're going to John 10.10. 10. That's where we're getting ready to go there. And so once we come out of our emotions, saints, we're going to be all right. Is that okay? And sometimes you just have to sit up and talk to it, you know, like yesterday. I was, Lord, any part of my emotions in me, please remove it. Because, see, you see better than I can see it. I don't know what's deep down in the inside. But I don't want to operate in my emotions because you told me my emotions would kill me. To be currently minded is death. And, Father, some places I done got in, I can't get out of it. Are y'all listening to me? You just have to be honest with God. I've gotten some places in my emotions and in my intellect and my soulish realm, and I don't know how to get out of it. And the reason I know that I'm not out of it, every so often it comes. Are you with me? Every so often it comes. And I begin to feel a certain way. And that certain way that I feel, I, I can't control it. I can't control it, and I don't like it. So, Father, help me. Are you all still with me? Come on, get real with me. We all get to places that we can't control and we don't like it. But we can be honest with God and tell him. And when you be honest and tell him, he'll tell you who you can tell. Are you listening to me? And you just need to be able to tell it, expose it. Don't allow it to keep happening. Are you with me? Yeah. We got to be able to say something to the world. Because if we don't, it will destroy you. And this, this is how I feel. I tell the Lord all the time. I know this ain't right right now, but this is how I'm feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't like where I'm at, and I can't get away from this thing. And, and that thing that tries to destroy me comes back when this thought comes to me. Come on, are you? Come on, let's go there. Yeah. So we got to know how to get in our spirits so that our spirits can control our soulish realm. It's the spirit that is going to control you and bring you back. And what is that spirit? It's the word of God. You got to get the word of God and put it on there. Because if you keep thinking it and keep thinking it, it's growing roots. And after a while, it's going to take you over. It's just like weeds in a garden. You know, you got your beautiful flowers and your beautiful plants and everything. And all of a sudden, here come the weed. You know. And then if you ain't taking care of it right, the weed done over, come on now, it's done overload the plants and the flowers and everything. And that's how Satan does us. He overrule us when we don't put the word on him. You can't think about the word. You got to put it there. I don't know if y'all heard about that little nine-year-old girl. I tell you, was the wisdom that the Lord, it only had to come from the Lord at that school when all those children had died and all her friends had died and she went and got blood off of her little friend and put it on her. 
so that she could lay down like she was dead and that guy wouldn't kill her. When he saw the blood on her head, he passed on by. Wisdom of God. And we need the wisdom of God, saints. Because we can outsmart the devil in any way that he tried to come up. I don't care if he's right up on you. God will give you wisdom. We got to get quiet. We're too busy. We got to get quiet so that we can hear from the Lord. Now, you know the devil didn't tell her to do that. It had to be God to tell her. And she laid down there like she was dead with the blood on her head. We need to train our children. We're so busy trying to get them rich and come on, you see, and get them in this and get them in this, all these programs. We need to get some wisdom in them. That's what we need to be started doing because we are in a spiritual warfare out here. The devil is not playing. And he's coming against the children now because of the wisdom that God has placed in these children. And the devil is taking that wisdom. He's taking it, perverting it, turning them away from who put it in them to give them wisdom in this earth. That's why he's killing them. around here hollering black lives matter they need to put it up over the abortion clinic black lives matter since they said matter it matters to them babies being killed you know they got stuff perverted nothing but an organization that's all that black lives matter. an organization greed for money Jesus yes Lord thank you Jesus John 10. My Lord, I love you so much, Father. I tell you, if you ain't never loved the Lord, you'll learn to love him. Okay. With all this foolishness going on, okay. baby, you will get real. Amen. Your programs will cut out. Your entertainment will stop. ready to jump with me, okay? John 10. Thank you, Father. My Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's go 10-1. John 10-1. This is Jesus talking to us disciples most assuredly I said to you he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way the same as a thief and a robber see that when you don't do things the way that God tell you to do you're a thief you're a robber because you can go and get it that way you know you can learn all the scriptures you want to learn quote them as long as you want to quote quote them and not obeying God you're a thief you're trying to use something that don't belong to you because you have not got connected with him in obedience come on now Satan was not connected to him so what he was doing he had no right to do it he was a thief and that's how we are we become thieves too when we don't obey God and do what God tell us to do and then we want to stand and believe God for some stuff and it ain't coming to pass you done stole something you had no business stealing and you need to repent and get it right so that God can be there for you. Are you all still there? But he who enters by the door, that's Jesus, is the shepherd of the sheep. Who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. See, Jesus was obedient unto death. He in the door. That he, 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 he was obedient to death. He didn't care what went on. He was obedient to death. The devil came up on him in the garden of Gethsemane. You know, and it was so strong and hard on his head. He says, Father, but it, if you could just remove this from me, this cup. You know, sometimes it's some terrible cups that come before us. And we, you know, we want to removed. But we need to say, but not my will. See, I willed and got too big and too strong. Father, not my will. But, come on, that's when but needs to come in. But let your will be done in this. Because he knew the call that was on his life, he had to save many people. And we need to get like that. The call that is on our lives, we need to save many people out there in darkness. Because they have no answers. 
They have no wisdom on how they're going to get free. They don't know how to go through this darkness. We do. We're light. But we got to get our light from up under the basket, the bushel. You know, the lamp's supposed to be bright. We done covered it up. And it's time for us to uncover it. Open up our mouths and go forward with the word of God. Who's going to watch over what we're saying? Stand out for allowing the world to promise us things. And it's only temporarily. Are you listening to me? Jobs, money, positions, titles, businesses. It's only temporal if you ain't got God in it. You got to put him in everything in order for him to be a part of it and run it like it needs to be ran. We got folks scared of their jobs, scared of their positions, scared of the, you know, are you listening to me? You know, you'll do anything somebody tell you to do because you're afraid. But God ain't gave you no fear. He needs you to speak up. We don't bring him in everything. We bring him in things we think he's supposed to come in, but other things we don't bring him in it. And we got to get real, saints. If we want what belongs to him, we better start giving him what belongs to him. Three, to him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. There you go. That's the problem. The sheep hear his voice. The sheep, not the wolves. See, because the world and turn us into wolves, you know? We hear the world. Come on now, we hear what the world is saying, and we do what the world tells us to do. But his sheep hear his voice and obey his voice. He didn't tell us to shut the church down. He didn't tell us every time they tell us to do something, that we're to do it. We need to find out exactly what is going on. Just a young man, just the other night, he was saying, Romans 13, where it said you to obey the government. He said you are to o o obey leadership as long as they're not coming against God. As long as it ain't interfering with God, you obey it. But if it's interfering with God, you don't obey it. That's why we need to hear his voice. We need to know his voice. Yeah. Jesus. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Have you been around him long enough that he knows your name? You know why he's saying that? Because the world then gave us another name. They done gave us fear. They done gave us lying, the voice of lying. Doubt, unbelief. That's what the world then gave us. And that's why we move out on it. When we hear that, we move out on that. Come on, rebellion, come on. Disobedience. Yeah, the world and gave us another name. He said, but his sheep, come on, he know. come on now. Let's look at that again. Yeah, it needs to be there. It needs to get down on the inside of us. Thank you, my Lord. To him, the doorkeeper opens, the, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out come on now he calls them by name and leads them out that means when you see somebody doing the word of god whenever situations come up and they're actually doing the word of god that's a sheep because he hears. he's reading and he's hearing it and he believes that he don't believe well i'm sick i'm depressed i'm broke no the sheep don't believe that Come on now. I don't care how it look. We don't believe that. Right. Right. And we speak what we believe. Right. And stop focusing on what we see. So you see, it determines. Do you really believe you're a sheep? Oh, what's going to happen? Is the wolf the ba 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 Come on now. Is it bumping up everything, up against everything God said? But, but, but. We got to get our butt out the way. We really got to. I'm serious. And start doing what God is telling us to do. Right. Until we do that, we're going to be in trouble. And when he brings, look what happened for him. When he brings out his own sheep, see there? So there must be other sheep in there too. You know, he said his own. So you can have some disobedient sheep. But when he brings out, yes, Lord, but, oh, my God. Yes, Lord, his own sheep. He goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Don't that put something on your mind? Are we following what this word says, or are we following what the world is saying and doing? 
we know his voice and we follow him. And I said, uh uh uh, no. God is making us sensitive in his spirit. So when something comes and we know it's not of God, you say, no, I don't, I don't feel right with that. No, I, I, I can't receive that. No, I'm not going to be a part of that. No. But when we done got so programmed, you know, to the world, until we have to start thinking about everything. When God talks, you don't have to start thinking. Because he speaks right to your spirit and your spirit moves right out. Your spirit moves right out when God starts speaking. But when you have to start considering something and thinking and going back and forth, you're not familiar with his voice. Because when you're familiar with, you know, when somebody calls you, you know the voices when somebody, when my sisters call me, I know their voice right away. Right. Friends call me, I'm familiar with their voices right away. So I don't have to go back and forth and say, now, who is this I'm talking to? You know, and some of them do sound alike on the phone, but you still pick up that. Just talk a few more minutes, you'll pick it up and see which one it is. Are y'all still with me so far? And that's how God wants us. He wants us to know his voice and to not follow it. Because you know he'll help you. That See, this is why we didn't get help with this pan, 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 pandemic. If we had known his voice and said, no, I'm not going that route, I'm not going to do that, he'd have stepped right up. Because he said, it don't have to be but two, and that's you, the Holy Spirit, the two. He in the midst. He would have did it. We didn't give him a chance to be in the midst. Because we follow what the world said. Are you listening to me? Or follow what our family said. Or follow. Come on now. Right in the midst. This church would have been closed down because different ones had told me, you shouldn't have it open. Why you still got it open? Because the Lord said it was supposed to be open. Right. I'm not afraid it's gonna ha- nothing is going to happen to me. And you shouldn't be afraid nothing's going to happen to you. Because he's been talking to you like he's been talking to me. Because we were here in the same church. Come on, we got to know that he, come on, we got to get that voice together. Who we listening to. Because we can say, Lord, like he told us, Lord, Lord, with our hearts, with our mouth, but our heart. Come on now, our spirits have not gotten in tune. He said, you're not following the word of God. Your mouth is saying one thing. Your mouth is quoting scriptures, but your spirit haven't gotten in tune. That's why you're still sick. That's why you're still sick and hurting and depressed and going through changes. Because your mouth been singing. But your spirit, which is the word of God, haven't got in tune. Y'all still with me? Ouch, 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 ouch. Yeah, this might not be a good message to the flesh, saints. You know, this, this is not a message that's good to the flesh, but I tell you what, it'll keep you alive. Right? And it'll bring you out where you shouldn't be. It'll bring you where you need to be. Five. Yet they will no means follow a stranger. See there? Look at that. Here's she. When you start reading it, oh, this puts something on my, this is my best, my be, this here, right here, John 10. Right, that's my best book. Because it'll put something on your mind. It, look, this right here, it'll put something on your mind. It'll, it'll get you real if you want to be real. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. Why am I looking like that? Because I'm following the, why, why is you all masked down? Getting shots. Why are you following the stranger? You wasn't told to do that. Why are you doing that? Why are you going through all these changes? You're following the stranger. We need to ask him to give us revelation when we read our Bible. Holy Spirit, open up the eyes of my understanding. This is your spiritual eyes, not these. These is open. You see it. It's kind of bad if it's bad. And open up the eyes of my understanding, my spirit. I want to understand what you're saying. I can't live it, Leonard. I can't live this. Because first of all, I've lost my identity. So now, come on, Satan stole our identity. Come on. When eating them in the garden, our identities got stole. So I don't have an identity to understand what you're saying. And been sitting on the folks that didn't know how to renew my mind. So I don't understand all of this. I need you to break this down to me. And once it get broke down in me, I'll start walking it out. I can't walk it out if it's not broke down. So Lord, open up my eyes of understanding. Restore my identity that you gave me. This is not, this is a false identity. And I don't want to walk in it any longer. Are you listening to me? 
Because you've been walking in it so long, it seems like it's real to you. Because this is all you know, you feel comfortable there. Comfortable making that decision. Comfortable without asking him. Comfortable with going on and doing how you used to do it. Are y'all still with me? Because we've lost our identity. So they'll run away from the stranger. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. See there? There's a lot of illustrations being used in this Bible, and we don't understand it. Because we've been taught to understand things out of our intellectual knowledge, out of our soulish realm. So when true revelation comes, it don't make sense to us. And when something don't make sense to you, you can't yield to it. You fight up against it. When the truth is being told to you, you like, kind of, ah, I know this. Why are you telling me this? Come on now. Right, but if we'd known it, we would have did it. You know, we got a lot of those, I know, I know, I know. You know, you're talking and they hollering, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know. Just, please just, you know, let's just, let me bind I know up. Because this is a spirit. You don't even recognize how it's took care of you. I know, I know. Well, if you know, why is this still going on? If you know why you're acting, why are you thinking, why, you know, and, and they don't like to be bothered with me when I start doing that, because I'm a person that comes against, I know. I don't deal with, I know. Yeah. Right. And so we got to really know, and guess what, you don't have to open your mouth, you walk it out. Folks see that you know it, because they see the manifestation of your lifestyle, that you knew it, you read it, you knew it, and you did it. Because if you're reading it and ain't doing it, you don't know. Way. We're on the runway, okay? We're going to take off in a minute. Let's seven. Let's look at seven. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I said to you, I am the door of the sheep. Come on now. He keep reminding us, I am the door of the sheep. I am. And he said, why are you still going that road? He's constantly reminding us who's in control over us, who's walking with us. Eight. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. See that? Thieves and robbers. God ain't told me to buy all these masks. That's a thief. He's stealing money. Greed. The spirit of greed. All oh, they are millionaires now with these masks going on. Are you listening to me? He said all came before him was thieves and robbers. Right. Shots just shooting up folks. Ain't nothing working. Right. Thieves. Robbers. Thieves. They all came before him. And we were supposed to hear him. But we didn't hear him and follow him. And got upset making excuses while we did what we shouldn't have did. Come on now, let's go there. But it ain't no excuse, it was just in disobedience because he tells us all in his word. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. See that? The real sheep didn't hear them. The real sheep still was doing what God said do. Those are the real sheep. Nine, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pastures. Saved. Come on now. Go in and out. Why are we closing the church now? We'd have been saved. We are, come on now. They'd still been going in and out, traveling and doing whatever they had to do. They wouldn't have never stopped. You cannot stop a person or people that is obeying God. Let me tell you that. I'm, I'm serious. I don't care how nobody thinks. Well, you know, I tried it and then you tried it. No, I did it. It worked. You tried it. Because that's the first thing they said. Well, I tried that. It didn't work for me. No, and it ain't going to never work for you. But if you do it the way that God said do it, it's going to work. It ain't working because you tried it. And that's what happened with a lot of people in the church. They try things. Well, let me try this and see if this is working. Well, no, it ain't going to work because you done already said you're trying it. Right. Because he said faith is now. Right. Faith is now. All right. Oh, God. Ten. Is that where I'm at? The thief does not come except to what? And we're going to steal. Come on. Kill and destroy. All right. 
I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more. But come on now, the thief. Come on now, when he comes to. If you sit down and get quiet enough, you so you're like, what? Jesus said he came to give me abundant life, but this got stole. Why are you blaming God? He, he said, he, come on now, he came to give you abundant life. If you know your words, you know that anything that's happening, come on, still, he's killed. The devil is stealing, killing, and destroying. And Jesus came that you might have life and that more abundantly, meaning what you're praying for, he's going to give you abundant life in it. Come on now, what you do, come on now. Everything that you're using and following his word, he's going to give what he promised you. But it's a consistency. It ain't no on and off. You know, I go when I get ready and I come when I please. And I, No, consistently. Amen. It's a process in this walk. Yes. It's a process when you're learning a new job. Come on now. You don't just get it overnight and you got it a business. It's a process. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall and you're going to get back up. And Jesus said a righteous man falls seven times and still get back up. So we just need to get our minds renewed to who he is. Eleven, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Come on now. He'll give his life for whatever you believe in for. And it ain't coming. He said, I'll give my life for it. And he done gave his life already for it. He done already gave his life. And we should not allow the devil to steal nothing that he done gave us. And he done gave us everything to live with. Ain't nothing that we need to ask for now. We just need to, like he tell us, call those things though they be not as though they are. Call it in. I call in sound mind. I call in healthy body. I call in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that I can live in this world, Father, with the wisdom to combat this ignorance that keeps coming up against me that the world have trained and taught me. I called in peace. Father, I've not had peace in a long time, but you give peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace the world don't understand, Father. I need that peace. I need to know that I am still in the running with you, Lord. I need to know that I can cast all of my cares on you. Because, Father, I've cared them too long and I give them to you. I need to know that you're renewing my mind, Lord God. You're bringing me into a place of rest. I thank you, Lord, that I've been sleeping at night, but I ain't been resting. But only you can give me that rest. I cry out for that rest, Lord God. Because in my rest, I can hear you, Lord God. I've not been resting, and I've not been hearing, and my mind have not been renewed. But, Father, I need that rest. And as I come and cast this care on you, Father God, when I leave, I'm going to leave it there. I refuse to take it any farther. Father, if I don't leave it here, I'd I'll be destroyed. I don't want to be destroyed. Because you said that you came, that I might have life. I've not had the life that you said I could have. You said I could even have abundant life. You even said the things that you did, I would do greater. I've not done them, Father, because I've not had that rest. I need your rest, Lord God. The world can't give rest. The world don't understand rest. I need rest. It might look like all is well with me, Father, but I'm not resting, Lord God. I need to rest in you. Everything look good. I'm smiling. I'm grinning. I'm talking. I'm jumping and dancing, but I don't have no rest. I need your rest, Lord God, so my body can heal. I need your rest so my mind can be stable. I need your rest, Lord God. I've had false rest, false peace, but Father, I need the real deal. I need the real deal right now, Lord God, because this that I see is not bringing rest. It's not bringing peace. It's not bringing joy. And only the joy of the Lord brings me strength. I've not had joy lately, Lord God. It's been false joy. And that's why I don't have the strength that I need, Lord God. But I cry out today that I yield my will to you, that those things that I need that you've given me, I need it, Lord God. I need it, that peace, peace that the world don't understand. So I can bring peace to this dark world. Restore my peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I call out that false peace right now. I command it to loose God's people. 
Cobra scandal, did he did he did the ball by by I command that false peace to go right now. So by she, under the ball with your high, depression that came in. I command depression to loose God's people, loose their minds, their wills, and their emotions. I command depression go right now. Oppress, depress, come on out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of the mind. Come out of their wills and their emotions. Come on out right now. Broken hearted wilderness. Go. I command you to use them right now. The blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus against you right now. Come out of their minds right now. I command insanity to go right now in the name of Jesus. Doing things the same way over and over. No change. Insanity. Go. I command insanity to come out. That spirit of insanity. I command it to go right now in ignorance. I command it to manifest and go. In the name of Jesus. I command you to come on. I curse the root of it right now. I bind the spirit of pride don't nobody know what i'm going through i can't tell nobody i can't pride come on out right now i command pride to come out i loose right now humility cobra scandidia cobra scandal the ball ba 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 ha see ya hando weirdness come on out i command that spirit of weirdness to come out right now in the name of jesus get up and get out of them right now broken hearts come on out of there i command you to go right now i command that lying spirit that's been Line saying all is well and all ain't well. I command it to come on out of the minds, come out of the wheels and the emotions right now. I command that spirit of weakness, no joy, no joy. I command that spirit of no joy to loose us and let us go right now. And I command strength to come in those areas right now. Pain, I command pain to go even right now. Pain in the joints, pain in the head, pain in your eyes. Pain, I command it. Come on out. Manifest and go. I command pain right now. The blood of Jesus. The blood. I plead the blood of Jesus on you. I plead the blood of Jesus. Come on out. Pain right now. Come out of the bodies from the crown of the head to the soles of their feet. Out through their toes and fingers on their internal and external organs. Come on out right now in the name of Jesus. I command pain. You hear me? The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Double minded. I command that spirit of double minded. Mindness. One minute I'm believing this, the next minute I'm believing that, and my mind is not stable. I come against it right now. Come on out of there. Double minus and schizophrenia. Go in Jesus' name. The blood is against you. I see. I see. I plead the blood of Jesus against double mindedness, schizophrenia, bipolar, mental illness. I command it to come out of the man right now, all the way out. All the way out. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Jesus name weirdness and tired tired of pretending tired of not knowing the real truth come on out of there right now come out in Jesus name all the way out all the way out I command it right now I curse pride at the root right now I command pride to dry up at the root right now oh I can't tell nobody I can't talk they don't understand what I'm going through yeah come on out of there I command it to go right now in Jesus name Double mindedness. Come on out. Come out right now. Weirdness and tiredness. Shame, condemnation. Come on out right now. Come on out. I command shame and condemnation to go right now. Right. Nothing works for me. I don't care how I try it. Don't work. I command it, lion spirit. To loose you now in Jesus' name. All the way out. Look like I'm always making mistakes. It's a lie from the pit of hell. You're on target when the devil is talking about you're making mistakes. Are you overdoing? No. Go. Loose their minds right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out. You right where God wants you to be. All the way out. All the way out. Come out right now. Loose them and let them go. I command you to loose God's people right now. I plead the blood of Jesus from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, out through their toes and fingers, on the internal and external organs. I plead the blood. That's right. It's cleansing and healing and deliverance in that blood. In the blood. All the blood. All the blood. That's right. I place the blood against you, devil. And I command you to loose God's people. Your power over their life is being broken right now in Jesus' name. The contract you've been had against them is counseled through the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. 
and we command you to cease and desist of your tactics and your maneuverings. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, all the blood. The blood covers those decisions that you're trying to make and you don't know whether to go right or wrong. You don't know to go up or down. You don't know which way to go all around. Right now, the blood is covering that decision. The blood is covering that decision right now, bringing wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in that situation. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the peace. Thank you for the peace, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. We receive your blood, Lord. We will not go another day. We will not go another day bound up like the enemy is trying to keep us bound. I call all pressures down right now. Get off of God's people in the name of Jesus. Come on out. Don't you dare tear them. Come out in Jesus' name. Angels, I pray that you would encamp around and about your people and protect them. As they're being set free and delivered, Father, we cry out for deliverance. You said deliverance is the children's bread, and we come and partake of that bread right now. Healing, deliverance, peace, and restored joy. We restore our joy right now, Lord God, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And Father, I pray that you would send angels with boxes of blood to every demonic, disobedient spirit that did not leave us. Put them in, that blood, put them in the box of blood and marinate them until they would leave. Until they would leave quietly and we don't even know they're gone. Come on out of the anger. I ain't forgot you. Come out anger right now. You will not hide any longer that hidden anger. I command hidden anger. Go. Come on out of there. Manifest and go. Hidden anger. Come on out. Come out in Jesus' name. Hidden anger. Come on out of there. Hidden anger and disobedience. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come on out of there. Hidden anger. I am so angry. I don't know what to do. I tried and it ain't working. I tried. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Manifest and go. Manifest and go. Come on out of there. Come out, anger. Hidden anger. Go. Come on. Come on. The blood is against you. I command you to go. I curse generational curses of anger. Come out right now. It won't go down another generation. I command hidden anger. Come on out of there. Y'all fall out of agreement with you. Better tell it to go. We know it's in us. Go right now. I command it to go. Sit up there and listen to me. You better tell it to go. Run it off. You know it's in you. Come on out of there, anger. Come out, open your mouth, and let the devil know you're leaving now. The anointing is here for anger, and I command it to go in Jesus' name. Come on out of there. Anger, hidden anger. Hidden anger, I curse it. Come on out of there, hidden anger. Pretense. Come on, pretending all is well when all ain't well. Pretending. Come on out of there, anger. Hidden anger. Big anger. Rage anger. Anger that would murder. Come on out of there, anger. Come on out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on out of there. Come out of there. We're not in agreement with you any longer. Come on out. Anger go. Come out of my mind, my will, my eyes, my hands. Come on out of there. Anger, come on out. Get out of my hands. Come out of my hands. You will not use my hands to do the...